Well, tonight, Dan and, and Brian and I are here together, and we're again covering this Building Up One Another, this, our, this Sunday School book by Gene Getz. We're going to be on chapter 11 tonight, which is called Submit to One Another. Uh, huge chapter, probably one of the hardest ones to read, hardest ones to, for us to, to bring to you. Uh, it's been amazing. Like we, we just don't come here and just sit down and start talking. Uh, we spent well over an hour already just thinking through as we, as we studied before we came and then just talking through how the Lord has worked on each of us as we studied this. And, and uh, this is a hard chapter. Uh, not hard because the message is hard, though the message is hard. It's hard because in, in our culture, this is just crazy. I, even, even when I even think of the word submit, uh, my initial reaction is usually a negative one. Uh, but when we look at what Ephesians 5.21 says, it says this. It says, submit to one another out of a reverence for Christ. Not out of a reverence for each other, though we should love each other. Scriptures are clear on that. But we should submit to each other out of a reverence from Christ, Amen. for Christ. Amen. Amen. So what's that big question? <laughs> it's just, that's the hard one, isn't it? So uh, what we're looking at is jumping over to page 164, which is at the end. But we want to bring that to the forefront in the beginning because it really... Um, I think nails down the question of the time period we're in and probably the time period that they were in when they were writing Ephesians and James uh, that we've been going through. And the question is, why is the topic of submission often such emotionally uh, and, and emotionally thorny topic? Uh, and what is the difference between the biblical view of submission and society's view? What do you guys think? What is the topic of submission, often uh, such an emotionally charged thing. I got lots of thoughts, Dan. I'll, you go first, then I'll jump oh, in. I'm, I'm thinking. So You're thinking. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, let me say this right off the bat. When we, in this American culture, where we are just such selfish, independent people, we can we can go it on our own. We think that's being a man, or that's how we can show that that we're that we're tough and we're resilient, and and we need to be those things but not at the expense of Christ, not at the expense of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so when we talk about this submission to one another, we're, we're right from the start, we're fighting against the very culture we're a part of. And, and it seems not to be lined up with, with how we should be thinking. In fact, we hear these other voices in the world you know, saying we need to be independent, we, we, it's all about me, it's all about I, and, and that you, you can't hardly go out and buy food or clothing. So it's, it's even your food now is tailored to you. Uh, I know I know that one of my English friends come over here, drives them crazy, all the choices they got to make when you get a meal. Because when you buy a meal in England, when you order the pork chop, you don't make another decision. That determines what potato you're getting. It determines what salad you're getting. It determines what, what dressing you're getting because they've already determined what's the best dressing to go with pork. Get over here, it's like, what dressing do you want? Do you want salt? Do you want pepper? Do you want onions? Do you want this? You want tomatoes, you want, and, and, and they're like, ah, <laughs> you know? So, so it fights against that, but, but individually, when the minute we throw this word submission out, it, it, just, it just throws a light on our selfishness, it throws a light on our insecurity, it throws a light on the fact that anyone would dare question uh, what I want them to do, whether I'm a parent or a husband or an employee. I mean, we're seeing it with all the things going on with, with COVID. I mean, no one wants to do what the president wants them to do. No one wants to do what the governor wants to do. No one wants to do what your employers are asking us to do. No one wants to do when you get to the store what they're asking us to do. So we're, 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 we just don't like to be told what to do. And then we talk about submission. And it just is like, <clears throat> that's my thought, Stan. Well, I, I remember the years we were chapter leaders for homeschooling, and I had said many times in that circle that homeschoolers are an independent lot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true of many of us in church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of our favorite holidays is what? July 4th, Day of Independence. <laughs> so it falls in line completely with what you're saying, Mike. Yeah. It's tough. Th then you think about the very model that Christ gave. Now here, if anyone needed us to show complete reverence to him, it's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So he could have easily shown up and lorded it over all of us, and there should be no question. Of, he, of course he has the right to do that. But what does he do? He comes and he models 
Servant leadership. Servant leadership. To the point where he's washing. This is God. The Son of God washing the disciples' feet. And Peter's like, no, no, you, you can't wash my feet. I'm, I'm going to wash yours. And Jesus said, let it be so. Because you all need to learn that this is the model. And when God himself models servant leadership and then tells us to do the same, I'm pretty sure we should be doing the same. Right, right. And it even directly re uh, responds to Jesus' baptism. Uh, John the Baptist was struggling with that. And he's like, I, I, I can't even loose your sandal, let alone mm -hmm. be baptizing you. I this is no. He says, let it be so. And the reason is he had a reason of submission to the mission why he was sent here. And, and what we struggle with, uh, even myself, when we start reading through the chapters where we even get to the word submit, sometimes we shut off and we should turn on and start mm -hmm. listening even more closely, which is what we're going to get into. We're going to get into fine-tuning the radio of your mind tonight. As we open up this uh, section, session three, we're going to read through some sections. Bear with us as we read through them because we want you to focus in on God's word, which is really the microscope that allows us to see more clearly. Mm -hmm. So be ready for that. Yeah, when, when, when we're not submissive and leaders are not using a form of servant leadership, it, it creates this other tension. And, and leaders, when they're not practicing servant leadership, when they really are trying to lord it over people, they, they can lord it over people financially, they can do it psychologically, psychologically yeah. they can do it socially, and, and that, that, is, that is awful. And we do it, but we do do this as parents, as, as leaders in the church, as leaders in our business, as, as husbands or wives, we, we use some of these emotional games, these psychological games to not submit, but to actually lord it over people. And, and as believers in Christ, we should be servants. When we serve our brothers and sisters in Christ, that is, that is, that's submission. When we're willing to look with intent on others' needs, not our own needs, but others' needs first, not our own needs, to lift them up, not lift ourselves up. That is what, what Christ is talking about. He's it's talking not about, always our own needs, it's often our own wants. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But, but I think you, service and submission, when, we ser when we're serving each other, we're submitting to each other. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we can sometimes get that what word, word rolled off our tongue, serve, and we can, we can live with that one. But the minute we use the word submission or submit, right away, you know, the hair stands up on the back of our neck and, and we're, we're, we've got problems as, as American believers, which, which is a problem. We, we have got to get beyond that because if we're not fully serving each other in a submissive way, We'll never have a unity that can survive right. calamity. Mm -hmm. and, and let's be clear, as, as the, we come closer to the time when the Lord's coming, there will be calamity. Right. And, it, and the, the bodies of Christ, the churches right. that survive, will be the ones that serve each other, that love each other, that are, that are practicing the things that Gene Getz talks about, this building up of one another. Um, it's, it's huge. This, this whole idea of serving and submission is huge. Because the minute we think we can go it alone, Satan is great at getting the weak one off mm -hmm. and seeking who he can devour. Just, just think of yourself and the things that you've experienced through COVID when you were alone, not meeting with the brothers and sisters in Christ. Was that, did that feel good? Mm -hmm. Not talking with people, not hugging people, not spending time with people, not bouncing your dumb ideas off them to realize, oh yeah, that was dumb. Uh, it, it was hard to do. If, if you can't just watch someone deliver the word on a, on TV or or Facebook or Zoom or any of these tools and think that you are are in the body of Christ, that's not serving the body of Christ. That, right. That's just watching something. And one of the things the enemy wants to do, uh, the enemy doesn't want us serving one another. Uh, this whole uh, separating the church, separating the body of believers across the nation and across the world. Uh, is going to happen more and more because the enemy wants to divide this. Uh, doesn't want unity, doesn't want servanthood, and if you can keep everybody in their house and you can keep everybody afraid of everyone, servitude stops. Mm -hmm. And really, that is the biggest 
uh, I would say, stamp that Jesus Christ is part of a believer, is a, a stamp that Jesus Christ is part of a church, is the unity of the believers, the unity of the body of believers, and the unity of a servitude mm -hmm. and, and servanthood. One good point I want to point out real quick on page 155, um, mid-second uh, paragraph, it says, being able to submit to one another, no matter what our position of authority, is a distinct concept made possible, I would say only made possible, by Jesus Christ. Amen, Amen to that, Brian. Christianity is unique worldwide. Mm -hmm. Remember that. It's only made possible through the blood of Jesus Christ. Christianity is very unique in that. Yeah, every other form of religion is trying to put somebody in a hierarchical sense mm -hmm. at the top of the pile. Not, not this level playing field for everybody. And true Christianity, when practiced properly, it is. there's no difference between, between elder, deacon, lay people. We're all in this together, all in an even way. We, we have different roles. We've been talking about, you know, we're all part of the body. Some of the hands, some of the feet, some of the ears, some of the arms, some of the leg. No one of them is, is ranked higher than another. We just all have different roles. Mm -hmm. And some people are gifted to, in many different ways. But, it does, but we all need each other as part of it. But the minute we become selfish, the minute we become insecure, the minute we do not know the Word of God and, and how it talks on this subject, which is why we're going to take time to read a lot of Scripture this, for this lesson on, on this, because the American, American Christians are confused about this whole topic of submission because they don't know the Word of God. Mm. I would agree with that, you. Amen. <laughs> Confusion comes from not knowing and believing and doing the Word of God. Believe me. And I'd also be the first to say that when we when we look at this submission, the, the way that the, the Bible talks about it, it's it, it's a, it's a mutual submission. Let me put it that way. Oftentimes, when this topic gets brought up in church, people are already starting to back off because they think, "Oh, well, there we go. The leadership is wants to talk about submission because." The elders are trying to control me, and they want they want me to feel guilty about them not listening to everything I say. The elders say, and, and, and if that's how we would practice the leaders here, then we would be wrong. We're wrong. Right? It's it's servant leadership. We'd be wrong. Right. It, it's it's mutual submission. I mean, anybody in the body of Christ should be able to come up to any one of us, as long as they're speaking truth from the Word and be able to, to contend for the faith through the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. No one is above that. But this whole idea of mutual submission isn't typically how it's getting practiced in the American church today. Right. And, and therein lies the problem. And if we practice that in the leadership realm that, that we face, there is a trickle-down effect. Sure. Correct. Which so we, we have example, to model that first. We, we need to work that out in our own lives first. Yeah. Christ said he was, a, he was the greatest. Wants to be the greatest among you, must be the servant of all. Right. So that, that's, that's our challenge. If, if we're trying to be leaders in, in the body of Christ, then how do we, how can we be leaders? We can be, be the best leaders we can be by serving all. Serving the best. Right? And, and if we're not serving the best, then, then our model that we should be trying to, to give is, is not right. It's, it's, the, it's the wrong model. And if we're not, if any of you see us not leading in that way, then by all means, please call us on it. And, and we would need to repent from that. And we would need to, uh, take that to the Lord. We'll get more into that here in a bit. But. And again, it speaks to everything that we've been discussing in James of sure. being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger or wrath. The anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And in that, when, when we have a contention of, hey, I don't believe I'm being served properly, or I don't believe that the uh, leadership is has a servant attitude, I believe that they want to uh, control and they're not serving, coming to a leader or coming to the leadership in general, please do, but do it in kindness, do it with a peaceable attitude, uh, doing, doing it with a unified attitude of restoration, and also do it with a teachable attitude as we ask each other. Whenever we come to each other, we're just asking, come with a teachable spirit. Because usually when we respond, it's because we don't have all the facts. And, and we may have just come from a full day of work, handling a full day of stress, 
handling a full day of maybe family issues that we're trying to handle and maybe five phone calls just before we sit down and talk and all of a sudden a really hot topic hits us and we may respond from the flesh if we don't remember what we're teaching in James. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to James. Quick right? to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. And when we do that, we're not speaking again, as Mike preached a couple of weeks ago, and, and Amy mentioned that it's been very helpful for her, not acting in emotion. Um, if, if, again, if you're hangry, you know, hungry, angry, tired, and you're responding to something, it never produces the righteousness right. of God, right. ever. Uh, I can confess that. Uh, I, I will open up the doors of Brian Thompson's house, which are open to any of you at any time. Please come and see that uh, we are not perfect. Um, but I can tell you this, I will submit to a perfect God. Amen. And in that, he will help us submit to you and teach you and, and lead you because we're going to serve you. Quick okay. to hear, slow to speak, slow to react out of emotion and anger. Amen. A lot of ways that takes us to that key thought that we had on 160 there, page 160. The key is for all Christians to develop the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. to be willing to lose their lives in order to find their lives. <laughs> uh, Brian, you had the hymn the other week, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, look full of this wonderful face, mm -hmm. and when the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his, his glory, glory and, and grace. grace. Yeah. Right. Then this past Sunday, we looked at him, may the mind of Christ, my Savior, mm -hmm. live in me from mm -hmm. day to day. So that really is the key to, mm -hmm. to any and all of this that we're looking at. Yeah. So, so going back to that key then, Dan, for us to develop the mind of Christ, starts with we got to get rid of the mind of Mike and supplant the mind of Mike and the mind of Dan and the mind of Brian with the mind of Christ. And Dan, you're pointing to the Bible. There's where the mind of Christ is at. Uh, and do that and to do that then you got to be willing to lose your life mm -hmm. well then we're right back to selfishness again because when we're not willing to lose our life we're trying to hold on to self right because we want to please self self is the most important and that will always fight against this key concept of developing the mind of Christ and he tells us if we lose our life we will find it <laughs> turns the whole world upside down turns the world upside down but we don't want to, we don't want to lose our life because we kind of we kind of like our little selfish life. The live this world revolves around the world of me. <laughs> it's tough. It it's is tough. It is. It is. Yeah. It's tough. I tell you, uh, church, I, I, I'd like to encourage you along uh, with others that I have. If you get an opportunity to uh, read or study through the book, uh, removing I from life, removing King Me from the throne by Steve Atner, uh, you would gain a biblical insight into exactly what we're talking about. It's a James personified. It's, it's this study personified, um, putting it in action, right? And that's what we started this mm -hmm, with. Mm -hmm. um, setting goals, uh, knowing God's word, um, being a Christian, uh, saying I have faith, mm -hmm. all comes to naught right. if we never put that faith into action. Right. Right. And that's what James says. It's not about works that any man could boast. It's about faith in Jesus Christ. But that faith is an active faith. Yeah. That faith is a faith that makes us move. So again, it's not works that saves us, but when we're motivated by our faith, it will change the way we act. Amen. Because we've developed this mind of Christ. And what would Christ do? He's going to work out of his mind. He's not going to do it the way Mike would. He's going to do it the way he would. And that's the way we want the, the Lord and the Spirit to operate in us. Amen. So, that, so that the first thing that comes to our mind to do is the things that the Lord would will us to do. Not that the selfish thing comes up and then you got to beat that out of your head and then, then go off and do it. In, well, in a way that I don't want to do this, but I know it's the right thing to do. The Lord isn't looking for us to do that. Romans 12 and 1 and 2 comes yes. in. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be transformed. That's and, a big word. And that's a toughie because we are all in this world system. We all deal with our flesh. And, you know, that's a hard thing. Well, we're before we're saved, we were, we're come to yeah, the Lord already conformed to the world. Yeah. And, and the world especially right now, don't, don't miss this, folks. The world is trying to conform you. The talking heads are trying to conform you. They're trying to, you can't think that, you should be thinking that. You shouldn't be thinking that, you should be thinking that. It's always trying to conform you. But the things that we should be trying to be conformed to, we should all want to be brainwashed in the Word of God. Right. Not brainwashed by the 6 o'clock news. Correct. That's where we should be getting our brainwashing. We picked the up the grandchildren uh, the other day, and 
one of the kids said to me, Papa, life is, life is hard. And I said, well, you, you're right, but why is life hard? He thought, and I said, well, you go back to Genesis, and we find Adam and Eve made a choice there that you and I all have to deal with, mm -hmm. and that's sin. Mm -hmm. And that's why life is hard. Well, and, and that's not just because of their sin and their choice. I mean, each of us, every day, we, we make choices, and sometimes they're bad choices. Right. And usually our bad choices make life hard for us, because there's consequences to sin. So when we make stupid decisions, we've got foolish consequences that we have to, to live through. And they're not always easy, and I, and I don't want to joke about that, but I, I chuckle in a sense, because I just know how many hard things I've had to work through, Dan, because I've made some really mm. foolish decisions. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. <laughs> Absolutely, because those decisions were not made in the Lord. Those decisions were not made in the Lord. It was made in a, a moment of selfishness, or a moment of desperation, or a moment of insecurity, or a moment of confusion. Right. But certainly not made in the clarity of the, of the Word of God. That's for oh, sure. That's right. That's for sure. And I think that's what comes down to where David was, as he was meditating on the Word of God, meditating on the statutes, meditating on the precepts of God. And sometimes the word meditation has been overtaken by, uh, again, worldly things. Mm -hmm. um, we're not talking about centering yourself on anything except Christ. Right. Don't center yourself on the universe. Don't center yourself on self. Your center is Christ. Amen. Christ alone. In that, we can understand that we can pour in God's word and precepts so that when we face things, maybe it's what you face with a wife today. Maybe it's what you face with a husband today. Maybe it's what you face with a spouse today or a significant other or an employer, an employee. If you're responding from the flesh, mm -hmm. if you're responding, what we say, carnally, it's always going to be wrong. Yeah. It's always going to be wrong. But when you're meditating on the precepts, the concepts, the truths, and the, uh, the statutes of God, of God mm -hmm. then you slow things down. And we just learned that in James. Mm -hmm. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Right. See, if we slow things down, see, we're in a quick, quick world right now. Somebody writes something in social media, boom, you answer. And then you look at it and you go, boy, I wish I could, I wish I could change that. I shouldn't have responded with that filth. I shouldn't have responded with that bad attitude. I shouldn't have responded with that negativity. It's too late. It's out there. And it's a good lesson for us to learn. Don't respond to those things. Wait. Think. Take a deep breath. As we always said, uh, when uh, I used to teach a uh, wife battering um, uh, seminar, and I would say, take a deep breath and count to 10. And everybody's like, oh, that's kind of a joke. No, it's not. When you're angry, you can't think. Oh, absolutely. Uh, quick, for instance, we don't have much time, but when I was in football, I was a nose guard. And I know I don't look like a nose guard, but I was a nose guard. I was a crazy guy. But, but the way I got into the backfield was to make the man in front of me angry. Because as soon as he was angry, he couldn't think anymore. He didn't know if it was a pass play, run play, a pull play. A, uh, he had no idea what was going on because he was so angry he couldn't even hear what was going on in the backfield. He would mess up every time. And that's the same thing the enemy does to you. Right. Same right. thing the enemy does to us. He gets us angry, mm -hmm. gets us all in and then we respond wrongly and quickly. Yeah. Time's fleeting with us. Let's let's <laughs> just take a, some time here to go through these scriptures specific to how submission acts in different relationships. And these are the these are the scriptures that we should be meditating on. If, if there's any of these that are a particular problem for you specifically, then just keep Keep meditating over and over and over again. Brian, go ahead. You, you start. We'll just work through each one of these. Where we're going to be, church, is on uh, page 160, uh, and step three. And we're just going to read through these. And we want you to listen carefully or read along with us. And uh, I'm going to be starting in elders to other members of Christ's body. Elders to other members of Christ's body. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Serving as overseers, not because you must but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, Amen. not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock, 1 Peter 5, 2, and 3. Christians in general to elders, Christians in general to elders, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well 
are worthy of double honor, especially those who work in preaching and teaching. 1 Timothy 5.17 Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you, now listen to this, as men who must give an account. Mm -hmm. So we have to give an account for even how you're responding and how we teach you. And we have to be very careful how we teach. So I don't want to get into a big, long exhortation on it because it'll take too much time. But listen to this. Obey them so that their work will be what, Mike? A joy. A joy. Not a burden. Not a burden, right? Right. For that would be no advantage to you. Hebrews 13, 17. Younger men to older men. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Humble yourselves. I'd rather humble myself than be humbled by God. He, and he can humble us. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 6. Well, I also talked about the husbands to the wives. And uh, in Ephesians 5:25. The scriptures is, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, there's the example of a godly Christ example of how we are to relate to our wives. Uh, Colossians 3.19, this is where I have messed up different times. In fact, I did that just this week. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. I spoke hardly with Diane. And I had to come back and we had to work that out. And I said, hmm, that wasn't a good move on my part. And then in 1 Peter 3, 7, Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as the weaker partner. And as heirs with you of the gracious life, of, gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Mm -hmm. So our prayer wow. life could be hindered if wow. we are improperly having in that relationship yep. with our, our spouses. Great point. That is important for us to be considering that. And then in Colossians, the First Corinthians seven, it just talks about the husband-wife relationship. Our our bodies are not our own; it's our spouses, and we need to recognize that. Then it goes into an area about wives to their husbands. Uh, Ephesians 5, 22, 24. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Not as the church. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their own husbands and everything. And then 3, 18 in Colossians. Again, that we submitting relationship is as it is fitting in the Lord. And I think one of the things that is so important of our, our, our women in our church, and I'm, I, I appreciate that. I see it in, in Diane, and, and uh, I, I see it on a Sunday morning where the older women are coming alongside the younger women and reaching out and expressing uh, that concern, being that godly example to Titus, to Titus 2 woman. And then there's that, that beauty. And the beauty that lasts and that builds and increases is that godliness in that person's life. That wife that walks in her relationship with God through God's word becomes more and more beautiful. Each and every day, and that's so special. Amen. Some more relationships that the Bible speaks very clearly about in this whole relation of submitting is is parents actually submitting to your children. Uh, Ephesians chapter six four says this: Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and in the instruction of the Lord. They need to understand that the things that you're asking them to do are in the Lord, not just because you want to lord it over them. Colossians 3.21 also says this, Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. And then in the relationship of submission of the children to the parents. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. So it's a commandment. If you follow it, there's a promise there. That it might go well with you, 
and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. That's from Ephesians chapter 6, the first three verses. I think I'd like life to go well with me and live long in the earth. You want it, you want it not to go well with you? Just keep disrespecting your parents. Not, it, it'll play itself out. See the you know, that comes into factor when grandparents come into the picture. Oh, now, Dan, don't talk about that. <laughs> we, have, we currently have all six of Pete and Amy's because they have endeavored to teach and train and there's yep. obedience at home. I can, with grace, take all six of them. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Just don't spoil them, Dan. <laughs> don't spoil them. No. <laughs> uh, another relationship that the Bible speaks clearly about in this whole area of submission is employers to employees or masters to servants and vice versa. Let's look at these. Uh, Ephesians 6, 9 says this, and masters or employers, treat your employees the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he was both their master and yours is in heaven. We all answer to God. No one is without a, without a master. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a boss. Our boss is the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is no favoritism with him. Colossians 4, 1 says this, masters, Provide your employees with what is right and fair because you know that you also have a master in heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have authorities we submit to. No reason to be lording it over people. Now servants are into the masters or employees to employers. Slaves or servants or employees obey your earthly masters with respect, with fear, and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ just as you would obey Christ. Wow. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but like slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not just to win favor, but doing it from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for what, he does, for what good he does, whether he's a slave or whether he's free. Ephesians chapter 6, 5 through 8, and Colossians 3, 22 through 25 teach us that. And then one, one other verse in that area. 1 Peter 2, 18 says, says this. Employees, submit yourselves to your employer with all respect, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. Peter shared those words. Jesus always turns it up. Turns the world right? upside down, doesn't he? Because <laughs> it's easy to serve people that treat you good. Right. It's not easy to serve people that treat you bad. Uh, much like that, uh, we're going to uh, read about Christians to government officials um, in Romans 13, 1 and 5 and 7. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe a tax, pay a tax. If revenue, pay the revenue. If respect, give respect. If honor, then honor. We had spoken a little bit about this before we started, and uh, that may be a lot. <laughs> we, we also have to remember um, the relationship of Daniel, uh, the, res the relationship of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at these um, verses through the lens, or remember the microscope of God's Word. Look at the Old Testament and the New Testament together to get a full aspect of what we mean about respecting authority. Uh, there is authority that we are to respect and follow what they do, but we don't follow that blindly. Just as Paul did not allow the Roman officials to beat him be just because they wanted to. He said, wait a minute, I'm a Roman, Roman citizen. What you're doing to me right now is unlawful. So we do have the right of conscience to be able to speak and say these things that are being happening or doing are unlawful and cannot continue. So be very careful with just reading that in, in the uh, small context of, oh, I just have to obey everything that the authorities, uh, uh, governing authorities, uh, tell me. Yeah. And when you don't, when there's a reason for not, you've got to be ready like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be put into the fire and say, if the Lord wants to protect me from this, he will. If the Lord's going to allow me to die here, I still will trust him in that, and I will die there, even if the furnace is turned up seven times hotter. Correct. Uh, and they did that... With respect, with, with not totally defiant. No, right. it was total so, respect. But they, they wanted they important. wanted the authorities to know that on these on these areas division work, where what we're when we're being asked to not 
show our ultimate authority to the Lord. Mm -hmm. right. the, that's where we, do, we do the, the dividing line. That's the dividing line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as Brother Dan said, always showing that reverence for Christ through mm -hmm. showing respect and honor. Mm -hmm. uh, we can um, always uh, disagree with something, but we always should respond as Christians. As not, in not in Christ. anger, not no. in hate. I, and, and that truly is one of the areas where I think the Christian church in America has been weak. Because we, we are being labeled as haters and angry people. And unfortunately, it's because we act like haters and angry people. We're, the, the, the shoe fits, we're, we're, we're wearing it. And we have got to show a love that is so different, that right. looks so very different, right. that, that we, we can't be... Con um, what's the word I'm looking for? We, they can't they can't put that name on us and, and be been hanged there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that's not what we, we should be so loving they they can they can say we're too nice they can say we're too loving they can even say we're maybe maybe we come across weak but they can't say oh, that guy's just full of hate he's just an angry man that's not what we're looking for we that's if we're doing if we're if that's the testimony of our life then we then we have not lived as Christ lived and that's a good point that Mike has made the testimony of our life. Uh, this is worth just a minute, so listen carefully. Daniel knew what the edict was of the king, not to pray to anyone in that 30-day period, but to the king. But what does it say? It says he did as he always did. He continued his testimony. It wasn't an act of defiance. It wasn't an act of, of, of rebellion. He did as he always did, and he was ready to pay the price. And he knew it was God and God alone that could save his life in the lion's den. So we're going to look at uh, 1 Peter 2, 13 through 17. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as a supreme authority or to governors, who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. Now in this world, some things are getting a little tipped upside down because we're in the last days. But For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Remember that. Never grow weary of doing good. Mm -hmm. By doing good, you silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up right. for evil. Right. Never. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect to everyone. It doesn't say to those that you, that you totally love. It says to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers, fear God, honor the king. There's a whole principle that is tied throughout all of scripture from old and the new, and that is to walk before these truths with humility, mm -hmm. self-examination, where are we wrong, where do we come up short? Uh, we need to consider where we need to improve. Uh, if, we do, if we do not purposely do that, we're, we're just spinning our wheels. Right. We're, we're doing a lot of talk, but talk is just talk, and it doesn't amount to a whole lot. And as we walk through the book of James, we're finding that's reinforced again and again. Right. Action, doing, is what's important for us. So part of that is to consider where we are at. What areas do we really need to take steps in to improve? Um, Personally, I have to walk through that. We as uh, family groups need to walk through that. Uh, as a church, as a whole, we need to consider that. Not just pat ourselves on the back. Sometimes we're quite guilty of that. Mm -hmm. We do have areas that we need to improve. Right. The other part of that is to take particular steps. Once we realize and come to that point of admitting that, oh yeah, I, I, I can make some improvements here. All right. Just having a head knowledge that we need to do that is not sufficient. We need to take some particular steps to do so. Knowing is not enough. We need to do, just as what's said in James. In fact, in James chapter 1, verse 25, but the one who looks into the perfect law, you know, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being not a, just a hearer, but who forgets, but a doer who acts. And he will be blessed in his doing. 
that all has to unfold in our lives in order for it to be real, in order for it to be an encouragement to one another within the framework of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. or and a witness to the world that's around us. Yeah. So, and your last statement, Dan, actually launches, sets up for the next, for the last chapter. The last chapter in this book is yes. encourage, encourage one another. Yes. So when we're submitting to one another and loving one another, mm -hmm. then the natural end effect is encouragement of one another. And then that'll be the next and, and, the, and the last lesson we have for you. Um, Brian, would you just close us in prayer? Mm -hmm. Church, amen. Father God, we uh, thank you so much for Genesee Country Church and uh, our visitors and all those that may be uh, hopefully encouraged by going through this uh, book study together. And Lord, uh, not only just a book study, it's, it's a pointing towards your word and opening up the thought process of putting your word in action. And Father, I don't think it's by accident at all that you have us going through the book of James at the same time. Right, that's right. Uh, Father, that you just had us go through the first half of Matthew at the same time. Uh, that James speaks almost specifically uh, through Matthew 5 through 7 at this time. Uh, Lord, you are omniscient. You mm -hmm. are omnipresent. Mm -hmm. You are mighty. You are powerful. Amen. One thing that I love, Lord, thank you. You are unchanging. Amen. Father, I see the same Jesus, the same God in Genesis that I read about and see revealed in, in Revelation. Amen. And Father, I thank you that you died for our sins, past, present, and future. And Father, that you nailed them on the cross. And Father, that you are resurrected and we walk and live and abide in that resurrection power. You are the vine and we are the branches. Father, we cling to you as we cling to one another. Father, help us to walk forward in servitude, in love, in uh, encouragement, in, in just continuing to have a unified heart and body. Help us to put aside all the, the things that the world is throwing at us right now. Mm -hmm. Give us the peace that is beyond all understanding. Watch over those right now, Lord, who are sick, those who are weary, those who have, are heavy laden, and I pray that they would come unto you, for you are the lowly shepherd. Mm -hmm. Father, you are the way, you are the truth, you are the light. There's no one that comes to the Father but by you, Jesus. We thank you tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do and what the people of God are about to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen.